She won most talkative in high school, and she has been running her mouth ever since. Welcome to the Lisa Fisher Said Podcast with your host, Lisa Fisher. All right, people, I've interviewed Regis Philbin, RIP, Joan Rivers, RIP, Kathy Lee Gifford, she's alive. I've been on the red carpet at American Idol. No one has moved the needle for my own son until he heard that Logan Delgado was going to be on my podcast. <laughs> my kids have never been impressed with my career. I've been in front of a TV or camera um, and microphone since the 80s. But until I had you on, Logan, now I've finally, they're like, now they're tracking with me. You've made a, a huge impression on people. How did your journey start? Why are you so famous? <laughs> oh, I mean, I don't think I'm famous, but I, I definitely have made impacts on people's lives. And I think it's just because I'm so down to earth and I try to relay my message like, look, I've always said this. I am, there's nothing special about me. Okay. I put my pants on just like everyone else. I have issues. I have problems just like everyone else, but I still make it a priority to take care of my fitness and health, right? It's the most important thing. And when your son started following me, I didn't have kids. And so I always just say, man, you know, I, it's hard to find time. Well, once you have kids, then you truly yeah. understand what that Is means that when you don't have time. But yeah. uh, it's, it's a whole new motivation, right? Like I now try to stay healthy and focus on my fitness and health for my kids because I've always said this, the best gift that you can give your loved ones and your kids is a healthy you. The best gift that I can give my daughters is the healthiest version of their father. So how it all started for me, I was not always into fitness, guys. There was a time in my life when I was severely overweight. I was obese. I had type 2 diabetes. I had high blood pressure. I had insulin wow. resistance. I was taking all kinds of medication uh, for cholesterol. And yeah, I was just in a very bad spot because sadly, I ate like a traditional American diet, right? Yeah. Which is fast food, drinking on the weekends, you know, just not prioritizing my sleep, staying up all night. And it all caught up to me at about the age of 26. I was went to the doctor and the doctor was like, whoa, what are you, what are you doing? Right. You are in very bad health. You, you need to be on all types of medications. And so I was in a very bad spot. Uh, once I left high school and kind of went on my own till about 26 was just in a very, very rough spot. I was, I was, I, I would say I was probably depressed. I definitely didn't like the way I looked. I definitely mm -hmm. knew I was overweight and I, I would always avoid the cameras, avoid pictures, you know, like kind of everyone else would do if you, you know, were self-conscious about yourself. Um, so after that, I then, um, I, I, I remember the day that I made the decision. Um, I was, I had just got a new job. And so I need to go buy some new clothes for, you know, like a uniform for, for the job. So I was like, okay, let me go buy some new pants. I need some new pants. Um, and I remember having to get a size 40 waist, men's 40 waist. Mm. Okay. Um, I'm five, six guys. <laughs> I'm, I'm very mm. short. So short mm. and wide does not look good. Does not look good. And I remember like, oh my gosh, I cannot believe I have to get a size 40. Like that is mm -hmm. crazy to me. Um, in high school, I was about a size 30. And oh, um, wow. yeah, so jumped up, yeah, jumped up five, five sizes. And mm -hmm. I was like, whoa, this is, this is not good. And, and I remember I snapped that picture in the dressing room and I saved it on my phone because I was like, I am going to go to the gym. I'm going to get a gym membership and I'm going to start my journey because this is, how did I let this happen to me? And that's, that's kind of where it all started. That is what lit the fire. And along with another funny story that took me a very long time for me to share, because like most guys, um, guys are, are, are um, they don't like to say that they're jealous. They don't like to reveal that they're insecure, but th there was this thing on Facebook. Do you remember where when we first started Facebook and it would like recommend friends to you, like, yeah. Hey, you have so, sure. you have 150 yeah. common friends. Like mm -hmm. you must know each other. Mm -hmm. Well, it just so happened. It was a guy uh, that my wife dated in high school. <laughs> it was my wife's ex-boyfriend. And it was a picture of him in the gym with the shirt off flexing. Oh man. 
And I was like, that hurt. Oh, oh definitely. Yeah. It definitely hurt. I was like, whoa. I was like, man. And I know it sounds kind of weird and goofy now, but I, I, I screenshot the picture and I told uh-huh. myself, I am not going to let this guy look better than me. He is not. So I screenshot that picture and I used that as motivation as well. So anytime yeah. I went to the gym, if there was times that I just wanted to stop, is there times that I didn't want to go to the gym? There's times that I wanted to go eat fast food. I would just look at that picture and it would help keep me back on track. And so I guess the moral of that story is like, no matter what gets you going, no matter how goofy it sounds, no matter what it is, take it and run with it, right? So for for everyone, for every person, individual, it's going to be different. But that was my two motivation factors was going to the doctor, having to buy new pants, and then Facebook rec- recommended me be uh, friends with my wife's ex-boyfriend, which to this day, I'm still not friends with. Good, I don't want you to be. I can't stand it. <laughs> but but no, but I also I also got to thank him because I don't know if I'd be having this conversation with you if it wasn't for that picture or for him. So, yeah. Well, and you know what? It, this also shows us that mindset is also a visual for us. And that's yes. why, you know, it it's not silly to put things up on your mirror that say, you are blessed by God, you know, Mm -hmm. or things that are positive messages because I mean, the Bible says, I think therefore I, I mean, we are, I mean, the man, so a man thinketh he is, is what the Bible says. And so you were thinking that the Logan you were going to see was going to be the cut fit Logan that he is today. So, you know, I, I I don't play with the universe. I I use God as my father and who guides my life. And so it's putting it out there of just saying, this is what I want. And it's really wanting the best for Logan at that time. You didn't know you would parlay that into a career and no. motivating others. But it that shows too that our weaknesses then can be our strengths in helping, you know, we it's the pain to purpose story. Yep. So what was your total weight loss and what is your waist size now? <laughs> so my total weight loss was 70 pounds. That's a lot of weight yeah, for a lost, man five six. That's a lot. Man of five weight. six, yes. Yeah, seventy pounds lost. Um, my lowest that a pant size that I got into was a size twenty eight. Uh, right now I'm a thirty thirty two. Thirty two fits comfortably. Yeah. Right, yeah. and uh, definitely am happy at where I'm at. Um, what I always tell people is that you're going to go through different phases through your journey. When I first started, remember, it was all about weight loss, right? I needed to lose body fat. Um, Where I'm at today is just maintaining muscle. I want to build muscle. I want to hold on to as much muscle as possible. I'm not in any um, weight loss mindset, right? And really, my relationship with food has dramatically improved. When I first started, if I had carbs or a dessert or a cheat, I would punish myself and I would mentally destroy myself. Like, you're so dumb. Why did you do that? Like, you're going to get fat. God, you're so stupid. Just self, like, just punish myself. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I would say, okay, you're going, you're, you're not going to eat for the rest of the day. You're going to go to the gym and have a two hour workout. Then you're going to have to do cardio for two hours. Just punish myself for making a mistake. Um, and I obviously no longer do that, uh, Good. anymore. I'm obviously more educated and, and the way you, you need to look at it is like, guys, um, you can break it down into a week, month, year, it's, you know, 95% of the time I'm going to be eating healthy. The other 5%, who knows? It may be right. in a special occasion, just kind of live a little, um, I take a step back and like, overall, I'm eating clean and I'm doing the right thing. I'm exercising, prioritizing my sleep, prioritizing protein, balancing my blood sugar and things like that. I don't need to worry about one little cheat or going to Disney. For instance, last week I was at Disneyland right. with my kids and man, we're eating chur- ch- churros and ice cream and popcorn. Right. Like I don't have to worry because I know when I get back home, everything's going to be fine. So um, that was the total. But then I think the best part of the story is I, I no longer have any of those metabolic dysfunctions, no longer insulin resistant, right. no longer a type two diabetic, no wow. longer on any medication, uh, that they prescribe to me. And I think those, you know, that's something that weight won't tell you. Right. But, right. Uh, so yeah. 
and that's why too, Logan, we have to get away from, we're now being criticized, those of us in the health space, if we talk about somebody's weight because they think we're fat shaming. No, I'm not yep. fat shaming. I just know that the person in the photo who is morbidly obese has risk for cancer, type 2 diabetes, dementia, kidney failure, liver, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. It's a health issue at that point. So I can't celebrate uh, somebody's obesity because um, it's a disease. It's disease state. Obesity yeah. is now considered a disease. And that is celebrating a disease state, which I hope no one would ever celebrate the fact that I, you know, whatever my concerns are, my health concerns. So yeah. I, I think it's also, we, we've gotten so divided, our country on everything that yeah. we can't call it for what it is anymore, that no. Lizzo is obese. Yeah. That's it. She's an amazing uh, performer, a lover story, a lover attitude, but she's obese. Yes. So that means Lizzo's can face things of health concerns that I bet she doesn't want to face, even though she told David Letterman, my blood work is fine or whatever it is. Well, it is today, but as you and I know, because of what Dr. Ben Bickman has taught us, that your fasting insulin is, well, insulin's really the smoking gun of our health, I feel like. Yes. And that sure, your blood sugar is 100, which is kind of elevated. But in 15 or 20 years, net, let's check it again, because that means you probably are going to be facing type 2 diabetes. So you probably had warning signs years before, yep. but you didn't know what to look for. So what were some of the things that in your health started to decline? Did you start getting brain fog then that you, I'm sure is reversed? Because once once your insulin is lower, you think clear. You know, once yeah. you start burning ketones and fat for fuel, uh, as you see, I'm drinking my water. It's 123 here. I probably won't eat today until four o'clock or so. That's um, probably a 20 two hour fast for me nice. and I'm not going to die. You know, no, it's one, it's fine. a wonderful feeling. In fact. Yeah. Yeah. There's so much to dive into with, with what you just said. And there's so many ways I want to tackle this. So first we've got nothing but time. Go ahead. Yes. I, I love it. So let's go, let, I want, let's go back to what you said on like how society is so divided on everything. Right. So when I first yeah. started, when, when I was obese, type two diabetic, insulin resistant, nobody told me anything about the way I ate, which was cereal in the morning, you know, oh. a breakfast bar, um, fast food at lunch, Chinese buffet for dinner, drinking. Nobody said anything. Nobody said, Hey, you shouldn't do that. That's probably not healthy. But the minute that I started eating steak, eggs, avocado, coffee, and putting butter in my coffee, putting coconut oil in my coffee, people freaked out. We're like, what the hell are you doing? Are you <laughs> crazy? Know. Like, this is not okay. This is not healthy. Are you sure about this? Everybody and their mom was questioning me, but that's the problem. It can't, can't you see like nobody questions when you're eating pop tarts and, 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 and pancakes and drenching it with syrup. But the minute you have steak, eggs, yeah. avocado, they're like, dude, what is, what is wrong with you? You're, um, yeah. Yeah, I hear it all the time. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. And that's what is healthy. Right. And so it's, it's a little bit of, we're so brainwashed with society telling us, you know, breakfast is the most important meal of the day. You need to start your day off with Kellogg's and honey, 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 uh, Cheerios. Well, and it's like, as we on. know in the intermittent fasting space, as Jen Stevens has said, who coined the phrase breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Would that be Dr. Kellogg? Did yeah. he happen to have a company that is pushing out a cereal and then sponsored all the research that goes with it? Yep. Follow the money. Yes, follow the money. That's what it's all about at the end of the day. And so that right there is like also education, right? We're not taught on nutrition. No. Um, from from the very beginning, okay, as children, what were we taught? Snacks, 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 snacks. Everything in a bag, a plastic baggy, animal crackers from school. And then our, our food at school is horrible. Like, don't get me started horrible. on there, right? And so- horrible. It, there is nothing about nutrition. Mm. And then let's talk about our food pyramid. Like it is backwards. Joke. It's, a joke. it's backwards, right? Yeah. And so we're not taught that. And so for 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 my audience, okay, for people listening or watching, I am a Mexican heritage background. So all of my, you know, Mexican American, I have a oh, huge Mexican family. Oh, so you Mexican have a higher tendency oh, absolutely. for type two. Absolutely. My, okay. every single one of my aunts or uncles, um, 
and cousins have some type of metabolic dysfunction, Mm -hmm. right? And it's all because of the Mm -hmm. way we eat, but they weren't taught about nutrition. No one's ever taken Mm -hmm. the time. Now, Mm -hmm. the beauty with social media nowadays and YouTube, you can easily go get that education from myself, from you and, 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 you know, um, from many of the people that we follow. Um, and, And that's great. But, you know, it just, it just, for people like my mom and dad, like they were taught from an early age, you got to eat crap, 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 crap. Mm-hmm. And that fat was bad and, you know, mm-hmm. and, and you got to eat high carbs. And so that's one thing. Um, going on now where I see, you know, the United States going, which is just absolutely bonkers to me is like, n- they're more prioritizing feelings over facts, mm-hmm. right? Um, and it's, it's like you just said the whole Lizzo thing. And I talked about this one time on my podcast. It's like, Yes, I love Lizzo too. I think she makes great music. I, I love. Oh, you her music. have used her as a absolutely as, yes, yes. Oh, that's great. Absolutely, Good. I, I, I had a talk with her with Doctor Smith. Good. Um, yeah. Yes, who you had on your podcast? Yeah, right. right so right. we, uh, w- you know, we we talked about Lizzo, and it's like she's not healthy, and 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 no. this is not an attack. This is no. not me being mean. You're right. I, it's it's more simply like it's more simply like Lizzo. I can help you, and I. I promise you you would feel better you yeah. would have more energy yes. you could perform better there's yes. so many things i understand you know she said that her blood work is great i i, I don't know if i believe that i would need to see it but whatever let's just say it right. is um i promise you you could live and feel better and so with me and my journey yeah the things that i saw the remember i want everybody to know this Insulin resistance comes first before you even start seeing right. these, um, you know, type two diabetes and right. the darken of the skin, skin right. tags, uh, you know, brain fog and all these things. Insulin resistance happens years before that, before it comes. So, for me, I, obviously, I was I was somewhat depressed. Definitely didn't like the way I looked. I was starting to get stretch marks on the my oh. i guess love handles you would say my my lower yeah. mm-hmm. abdomens flanks mm-hmm. yeah and i was like oh no because i was just mm-hmm. expanding right mm-hmm. um i you know for the longest time this is another thing that I, I haven't talked about yet but i don't have a thyroid i had my thyroid removed in 2005 so why at the, yeah, guess what? This, this this is crazy cuz no this is very very rare in men. It's just very rare in in general. Um I had Graves disease. You did. Yes. And so if, for people who don't know what Graves is, um I'm sure you've heard of um of what's the common one? Um hypo- I have Hashimoto's. Yeah, Hashimoto's. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is slows your metabolism Slow. slows mm-hmm. your metabolism down, mm-hmm. you know, it, a lot it happens to a lot of women. Didn't um, Flojo the Olympian have Graves disease. I don't know. I'm not. I, I'm not 100. I think sure. so because her her story is because here's the deal about thyroid, and that's why I love Dr. Cassie Smith so much. the The pendulum swings both ways, and mm-hmm. in either direction, you have fatigue and hair loss and some things. But Graves disease is a full on medical emergency because of what it can do to the heart. Oh yeah, it, it, if I didn't get it and yeah, muscle yeah. wasting. Yeah, if I didn't get it detected, I would I would have died. And yeah, so, for sure, uh, the, how we found out is I lost so much weight. People thought I was taking drugs. I re- and I and again, I'm 18 years old. I don't know anything about anything. I can't look past Friday night. You know, hanging out with my friends. That's and very so, unusual for a man to get Graves' disease. And at that age, and so I remember coaches and teachers coming up to me and were like, "Yeah, pulling me aside, like, wrong. hey." Is everything okay? And, I, and, and didn't I'm like, you feel I'm, bad? Like, weren't you I, shaky? And I don't know. I'm 18. Like, yeah, I don't. True. I don't like. True. It's. Yeah, I, I'm a child. Like, but fast didn't you have car- trouble sleeping? Don't you remember having trouble sleeping? I, who sleeps when they're a kid? Yeah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> I, I right. mean, it's like video games, going out with my friends, chasing girls. Like that. That, I, that's, that was your job. Right. I, I, guys, I'm in high school. I'm a senior. Right. Like, I'm sorry. Right. I, I health. What I. Type two diabetes, that's just not yeah. on a child's mindset in 2005. And so, you know, m- d- 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 um, coaches and teachers are pulling me aside. Like, Hey, is everything okay? Like, is everything all right? And I, I was so mm-hmm. confused. Like, yeah, what, you, what, what are you talking about? Like, I'm fine. And my mom's like, and I noticed I was losing weight. I just like, maybe I'm just exercising a lot. I don't know. Mm-hmm. And my mom was like, okay, 
we need to take you to the doctor. Like something's not right. Took me sure enough. They were like, oh my gosh, we need to get this taken out. It's too late. Like it's, you can, sometimes you can save it, but they were like, okay, no. So that summer we found out probably like spring of my senior year. Well then that following summer, they, it got taken out. So they took it out. I didn't have a thyroid. And for the longest time, I blamed that as the reason why I gained so much weight. Well, I, I, I mean, there there's some truth to that, though, because it is the metab. I mean, it's the gas pedal to the body and it does regulate your metabolism. And when you don't have that regulator, they're replacing your thyroid. I know. I understand. Yeah. But it. I mean, nothing does it as well as nature, the way God intended. Sure. So you probably did gain some weight from that. Oh, I gained a lot of weight. Uh, and, yeah. and and again, I blamed why I was obese. Never once taking a step back and looking at my overall lifestyle. Like, what was I eating? What was I exercising? What was I drinking? Yeah. Things like that, right? So um, long story short, when I got into shape and started my fitness journey and, and, and re- repaired my health, it's when I was like, oh, okay, I guess it wasn't my thyroid. You know, I guess it was... Well, I guess it that wasn't to blame. It was my life, my life choices, right? The things I was putting inside yeah. my body, the things I was eating, the things I wasn't doing. So, um, th- that's, those are the type of things that I experienced, and and yeah, I I feel great. Obviously, I feel amazing. Um, and I, yeah, I think myself. I don't know if I'd be here today if I never would have started my fitness journey for sure. Well, um, we're gonna add something to our uh, audio here. Gail Devers is the one who had Graves' disease. I just looked it up. Flojo died of an epileptic seizure. I remember they were two influential Af- African American athletes, and I remember reading the story about Gail Devers and her saying, "They were like, you just need to go out there and work harder." She was like, "Some because it will waste away your muscles." Graves' oh, disease yeah. is is nothing to play with. Nope. And that's why if the two of us showed up at an endocrinologist's office, um. And they asked me what my symptoms were in yours. You'd go to the front of the line, you know, like it is triaged in because yep. of the heart mm-hmm. and some other issues. So I'm very sorry you suffered through that. What are you doing for hormone replacement therapy then? Yeah. So I have to take a, a medication called level the roxin every single yeah. day. <sighs> yeah. That I, doesn't even work. That, well, it doesn't work as well in women, but I think it's different in men. So you feel good. You don't need to take, see, I do the natural preparation because yeah. the levothyroxine just doesn't work. No, I, I don't. I mean, I feel great. I, I, okay. I, I, I think fine. it's working. I've been taking it for 20. To, yeah. Almost 20 years. Almost 20 years every single yeah. day. And so I yeah. got to get blood work um, every six months. How much do you take? If you have no thyroid, how much I'm do you I'm at 200. Take? Yeah. I I'm would say two, at least. I'm, I'm at 200. Yes. And it fluctuates. It, 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 yeah. It, there's sometimes they got to, uh, they got to, I got to take two pills. Yeah. I got to take two pills and, and go to 250. Um, yeah. But when I first started, I think I was like at 150 and I stayed at 150 for years and years. And it wasn't until I would say about the last five years that they bumped it up to 200 and, and 250. So that's really interesting, Logan, because it's often titrated by weight. Mm-hmm. And um, so I, as a health coach and really a thyroid advocate, I mean, I'm, I'm big on thyroids because it's yes. overlooked so much in perimenopausal women and, and women as they enter menopause. Um, but a lot of times women will say, you know, I weigh, let's say, you know, cause the average weight of a woman now, a five, six woman is about 175 or 200 pounds, you know, 50 pounds more than it was 40 years yeah. ago, whatever. Yeah. And so I always say, they'll say, but I'm on 75 micrograms of Synthroid or Levothyroxine. I go, it's not enough. You know, it's typically titrated by weight. So mm-hmm. it's funny, but it also shows how efficient your body is in needing. So the pituitary gets involved and starts pushing out and starts messaging the rest of the body. And it's really, we are fearfully and wonderfully made. It's really amazing. But in your case, I think it's because you're so active Mm -hmm. and you do so much that your body is saying, we got to get some more juice up in here to get this body to perform like it needs to perform. So what you're doing is great. You're going by how you feel for my female listeners, go by how you feel and don't listen to a doctor if he, he or she says, ah, you're fine. You'll need more medicine because you might. <laughs> yeah. It's just different with women. You're right. And so you know who you need to check now is how old are your daughters? Uh, my daughters are five and four. Okay. When they are pre about puberty, 
And if you start no, because it runs thyroid disease runs in families. Absolutely, even my, Graves. My, my mom had my mom and two sisters have the Hashimoto. Right. This is what my original endocrinologist told me. I I thought was so cute. If the mom has it, all the girls have it. If the dad has it, the gene pool is tainted. Those are exact words. He what does that, that mean? Tell me what ago. that. What What is that? The gene pool, meaning the DNA in your family, is crappy. Means oh. everybody's going to have it. Yep. Meaning, so it usually goes from female to female to female, but in your case, it went female, 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 and the male got it. So that means your offspring, including your boys, if you have more children, including the males, will need to keep an eye out for it. Wow. Interesting. It's, it is, it, it's a pervasive illness. I mean, it's a common illness that is often underlooked, yeah. uh, overlooked and underdiagnosed. And yep. especially with women will say, it, and this is who I see, especially because mine was about 2003 when I finally got diagnosed. It took four years, but I remember I was going to the gym. So I was about 40. I'm 60 now. I can't do math, but I was 40. So I was going to the gym. I was watching my calories, thinking calories meant something they don't. Um, I was starting, I was kind of cold. I, I could not lose weight, could not lose weight. And I got diagnosed and then I started, you know, I almost had a megaphone at Walmart going, attention, Walmart shoppers. If you're constipated, cold, tired, your thyroid's not working. I would then go talk to trainers at the gym who would say, I've got this woman. She cannot lose weight. She hands in her food diary. And every time I'd say, check her thyroid. And finally they got to the point at the gym where they'd say, Lisa Fisher said, that's why my, my content's called Lisa Fisher said, why'd you do it? Cause Lisa Fisher said, yep. and they would say, Lisa Fisher said, you check your thyroid. And you know what? I was right every time yep. because there's something when a, especially a woman says I'm doing all the things right. And I was, but in my case, and so, so our listeners know before we signed on, we sign on here through Riverside as the platform we use. And, um, you can see my podcast producer, Darren. And this time I invited my son to introduce himself. And so he introduced himself and he's the one who started watching you as he thinks he was a sophomore at LSU, um, studying engineering, kind of depressed, you know, cause he was yeah. like, oh my gosh, I'm drinking too much beer. I'm eating crap and I feel bad. So he started following you at that time. And then he's the one that came to me in 2017 I think he started following you maybe in 16 mm -hmm. In 2017, he came home from LSU and said, have you heard about intermittent fasting? So we have you to blame because he was keto. First he was keto. We were yep. like, what? Yep. And then he said, have you heard about intermittent fasting? And I was so offended as his mother. Cause I said, if you think your mother needs to lose weight, you won't see your 21st birthday is what I told him because <laughs> he was 20. I'm a real loving mother. Um, and he said, no, I'm telling you because you care about health and this has to do with health. And I went, how does starving yourself have to do anything with health? And now I know that it's um, innate intelligence for our brain. That's where yes. we need to be is the fasted state. So what, so you started keto and then when did you start looking at time restricted eating? Yeah. So it's just like, it's an evolution of the journey, right? Like you, yeah, like your son said, like sure. I, when I started, it was, yeah. Like, and I, I would say he probably found intermittent fasting for me. Cause that was my yeah. second thing that I got into. Okay. So it was, strict keto. Then I got into intermittent fasting and then I started doing really long fasts. Um, yeah. And they What's got your longest? Up. My longest was 73, 73 or, or 76. I have a YouTube video on it. It was okay. almost three, I think it was almost three days. Um, somewhere around there. And so that was my longest fast, but I would always do 18 to 20 every single Good. day. Oh, that's um, yeah. And then from there, I went into, well, why don't I just do OMAD, right? Yeah. Which is one meal, one meal a day. day. Mm -hmm. So I got into that. After I did that, I was like, well, let me try this carnivore thing. So then yeah. I tried carnivore. Isn't it delicious? I, it is. Oh, it's great. It's great. It's, it's amazing. Um, and then and then I got into, I mean, remember, this is years and years, right? Like years and right. going through. You're right. And, Evolution. And then, and then I finally was like, all right, well, you know what? I'm going to try to dabble around with carbs because I'm, I'm healthy. I don't need to lose any more weight. I'm building muscle. Yeah. And let me just use these carbs as, as tools. So let me 
let me structure my carbs. So now I have carbs before and after my workout uh, to to utilize them, right? Uh, and so that's kind of where the, it it is it is gone. But yeah, uh, intermittent fasting, great. I, I think it's I think it's so easy to do if you're eating the right foods, right? And yeah. and we have this mindset of like you said, what was the first thing you said? Like how is starving yeah, good right. for you? And it's I like, said, how well, does, first yeah, of all, I you, said, I you're not believe starving. I'm so skeptical. No. Yeah. Well, we all have enough fat to get us through absolutely. till June. But we're so programmed. We're so yeah. programmed to eat five, six meals a day. You got to you got to have three big meals and you got to have snacks Two throughout snacks. the day. Yeah. And it's like it's not true. I mean, if you think about it, how did our ancestors eat? Like our ancestors just didn't walk over to their cave fridge and be like, no. hmm, let me look around. What do I want to exactly. eat? Like, no, they went and hunted. They killed, right. they ate, and then that that lasted, you know, one or two days, and until it was time to go hunt again. And you know, I don't, I know, I don't think our, I, you know, I'm, I don't know, I can't prove this, but I don't know if our ancestors had type two diabetes and insulin resistance no, and obesity and all these other diseases that we have nowadays. And I wonder why, right? Right. So, no, the obesity. So I've I've done deep dives into this. Um, type two diabetes was, uh, we know type one is probably from a virus or autoimmune. So type two was unheard of till about a hundred years ago. And in the 1800s, there were only cases of people with obesity that had some type of true genetic marker. Yep. And if you've seen the photos of the late 1800s of the man who was in the circus as the fat man, mm -hmm. he looks like today's common man. Yep. He probably weighed about two and a half and he was probably about five ten. That was known that people came and marveled over that because they'd never seen that. That was known as the fat man in the circus. So obviously things have changed. The foods obviously in the grocery store are not what we saw a hundred years ago, what our nope. ancestors saw or anything like that. So I do wonder, um, because of your genetic makeup. So we do know there is, we can outrun our genes if you, epigenetics, you know, yes. you don't turn the switches on and off. So we understand yeah. that. But with, um, so Hispanic culture and I think South Asian are the two genetic types now that are seeing this rise in type two diabetes and obesity. And part of it is high carb diets, oh, yeah. yep. you know, they're vegetarians in South Asia, like India, right? A lot of those are, yeah, vegetarians, whereas I'm eating beef, butter, bacon, and eggs all day. So, yeah. you know, I don't even consider that. And same thing with the Hispanic culture, a lot of rice and beans. So what has happened then that a hundred years ago, there weren't over or obese Hispanics or people from South Asia? What has, are the rice and beans lethal now and they weren't then? I don't understand that. I think it's a combination of things. I think, you know, it's not just the rice and beans, but it's the sodas. It's the, the life, snacks. Yeah, the it's yeah, the lifestyle, right? right? right. It's it, it's the yeah. seed oils. It's you know, yeah. it's they don't they don't make it how they used to, right? Yeah. Everything is now everything is now cooked in canola oil. Everything yeah. is now cooked in peanut yeah. oil, and th those are two you know seed oils again. Another red flag that yeah. is Poison. causing that's causing yeah. a lot of uh, problems in your body. And so it's just it's a combination of things, and 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 you know. Again, like if we're talking like my great great grandpa, right? And the way that they used to eat, you know, they ate the same foods, but they weren't they didn't look as 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 obese as, you know, my now yeah. nowadays aunts and uncles. But again, my aunts and uncles, like again, they're it's all pop and soda and yeah. chips and you know you go yeah. before you sit down and you go to a restaurant what do they do they just and you go to a mexican restaurant Carbs. what are they they're right. just giving you free chips and and people will destroy these baskets of chips like you know three oh. four baskets before the food gets there yeah. and it's yeah. just yeah and it, so and you yeah. know it just makes you hungrier now have you are you a biohacker do you do the cgm to see yeah yeah how so, your body responds absolutely so this is funny and i don't know if you know this so i own a company i'm the co-founder of biocoach and we oh. specialize in we specialize in metabolic health and so i'm gonna oh. yeah so we specialize in I metabolic health and we have a glucose monitor so we have a glucose oh. monitor that links up to an app and in the app you can track all your ketone readings are your glucose readings track your wow. food track your mood 
And so that way we can create a database of like, oh, hey, I oh, felt I really it. good on this day. What 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 was the reason why? Oh, I ate this. Oh, look yeah. at my blood sugar. It was at 80. Like, okay, I, I want to I want to keep it there or, or vice versa. Like, man, I did not feel good on this day. What did I eat? Oh, okay. Yeah. Look at my blood sugar. Wow. It was in the one eighties. No wonder. And so, yeah. And with, so with bio coach, we track your blood glucose. We have an a one C meter Wow. that can be sent to your home and do it in the privacy of your home that comes with four, uh, tests. So the beauty about that is like, okay, so if you want to get your household tested for the a one C, um, that's four appointments that you have to set that's four days that they have to take yeah. off. And it's just, nobody wants to do that, right? And so we can send you an A1C meter, uh, A1C kit, then you can test yourself and it. then three other people. And then again, you can put that data into our BioCoach um, app. And in our app, we have challenges, we have uh, educational videos that are put on by Dr. Um, uh, Jamie Seaman. I don't know if you know Dr. Oh, yeah. Fabulous. Mm -hmm. sure. Amazing. She's our chief medical officer. She's great. Uh, yeah. Chris Irvin, um, the ketologist. Another oh, great. Good. Yes. Good. Uh, Dr. Nikhil Antonio. Everybody knows him. Oh. Everyone shares his memes. Every Can I, somebody please get him on my podcast? Yes. He is one hard he's, he's guy great. to pin down. He is, he's very hard to pin down. He works with us as well. He has challenges on our app. And he's so we work. Genius. He's great. He, we love him. We absolutely love him. And uh, uh, Ben Azadi is, oh. is, has, has, you I need to check out our app. Soft, I, I love Ben Azadi so much. Yes. He's I amazing. I love his story. He is so inspiring. Okay. So how can I, I'm signing up as soon as we hang up. Yes. I want to yeah. do this Yes, because I like the biohacking. The only thing is when you're carnivore, it's a really boring glucose monitor. Well, like I'm, you know, I'm that's good. Well, the, well, this is what I've always talked about. And I don't think a lot of carnivore people talk about this and I've talked about this many, many times. So I always, you know, carnivore, they don't care about anything. They don't care about nothing. They're just eating meat, eggs, bacon, yeah. you know, and, and that's great. And they feel amazing. And, and yeah. they, they, they're, they don't have to take any medications. And my sus suspicion is I bet you feel good. I bet you feel good because your blood sugar is stabilized. You're yeah. probably most likely in ketosis but all nobody the, yeah. checks this, right? And so I did right. an experiment. I did carnivore. I'm like, I'm going to go carnivore and I'm going to check all my ketones and my blood glucose. Sure enough, absolutely, in ketosis, absolutely, blood sugar stable. And I'm like, see, that's another benefit of the carnivore yeah. diet. But carnivores don't talk about that. They don't use any devices. They don't use any meters. It's yeah. mostly always like the keto people and the biohackers. And so yeah. I always like to tell carnivores, you guys need to talk about this because all you talk about is eating steak, yeah. eating, eating butter, and you feel good, yeah. show the data, show why. So you yeah, can be you're like, right. yeah, show why, show why you feel great and why you're such an advocate of the carnivore diet. Show your markers. So then people say, oh, you know what? Look at this. His blood sugar stabilized because he's doing the carnivore diet or, you know, his ketones, he, he's actually in ketosis. That's crazy. I didn't know you can be in ketosis with eating so much protein. Yes, you can. Yeah. Um, so th th that's, that's always been my, my thing but is like, how, so I thought you had to have a prescription for a CGM you do. and I'm you do. across state line. So how do we do you that? You do. So we have two options at BioCoach. We send you our, uh, where's my meter at? I don't have my meter on me. Oh, okay. So here's, here, here is the BioCoach okay. box right here. This is what got you it. send. Send you, you got our glucose, ketones, health, right? So you open Love up it. the box, you got your glucose monitor right there with your strips and your lancing device and then you oh so i'm gonna do a finger prick every yes, time yes okay. that is one option that's one option but we also have the option if you want to get a cgm which is a continuous glucose monitor yeah you I can like those better. we can we can set you up and get you a prescription so we work with a doctor that can prescribe oh, um perfect. cgm in all 50 states. So okay. you it, have the option, that is right? Going in show notes. Are there any like coupon codes or yes? Shout outs um, well, you know what? Anybody? Why don't we why don't we get you a uh a discount code? You tell oh. tell me what you want it to be, and we'll it could be Lisa Fitcher. Do we or, have Lisa taken. Is Lisa taken yet? Lisa it's an old is, lady name. You know what? Lisa is probably taken. We do have a big um team. Uh we have a lot of team members okay. on our team. I would say probably Lisa would be taken. Okay. 
then everyone should know that Lisa Fisher said is my unique name on all my platforms. Let's and do it. Fisher does have a C in it. So if you could ask the powers that be to get me a little Lisa Fisher said, as soon as we hang up, I absolutely I'm gonna order. I bet Darren wants to order. I mean, this is something this is I'm I'm and I say all this because I I mean I didn't know you did this. I, yeah. I told you you're famous. I got some I got some ways. other big news for you. I, I got I got some major, Wait, major there's news. There's more? There's okay. absolutely more. There's absolutely more. Um, so we just made a huge announcement. Uh, three days ago. So um, during this process, you know, we want to help repair people's metabolic health. We want to help yeah. people reverse type two diabetes. As you know, half of the population in America has prediabetes and uh, there's another out. I don't know the exact number. I have it in my notes, but um, I want to say like almost 80% of them don't even know it, that they have prediabetes. Oh, I, I think the statistic is 80 80- Eight percent is metabolically mm-hmm. unfit, up to mm-hmm. ninety. De- Doctor Ben Bickman is now saying ninety-two percent. So that means there's some metabolic marker that people have no idea. No idea, especially no fasting idea. insulin. Absolutely. And so we want to fix this. That's what we're all about at BioCoach, and we want to do it. We want to get you doing it step by step with lifestyle change, right? Therapeutic lifestyle change. And so we applied for one. No, not one. We applied for the biggest grant in CDC history in the spring. We just announced it. We won the biggest grant in CDC history, $15.2 million (laughs) over the next five years to help them create and employ a diabetes prevention program. Oh, so, this is unbelievable. Unbelievable. We And there were three other winners. You may know them. You may have heard them. The other one is the ADA, American wow. Diabetes Association. Which is mad. bought and paid for by Big Pharma. <laughs> so they Just won. saying. Oh, oh, yeah, I'm good. I even have an awesome, something also that's pretty special. So uh, Trinity Health and then another yep. one that I totally forgot. But you've got a good grant writer. But that check was this amazing. out. Check this out. We also, along with the grant, submitted our own curriculum. So, and yeah, they accepted be- it. it uh, we uh, let's just say we're getting a lot of pushback. Um, yeah. But we aren't going to stop. So we're good. just going to keep don't. going back to drawing board because, as you know. We, we just don't believe in the food pyramid. That's not no. what, you know. And Is I think- Mark Hyman behind what you're doing? Because, you know, he went to Congress in the last three or six months and telling them that it, and Ben Azadi has said it. I mean, a million people are saying mm-hmm. it now that the food pyramid is inverted. Yeah. I mean, um, I, I don't, I know. I, we haven't worked with him, but maybe okay. maybe someone I need to contact. Yeah. yeah. So you that's just what need, we're- Somebody needs to get on Capitol Hill and tell the people, policymakers, that we're sick because of what we're being told. Part of yep. it is what we're being told. Yeah, absolutely. So that's what, you know that's probably the biggest news that we that wow. we've got. It's just absolutely crazy. We work with all types of people. We work with um, you know obviously a, a lot of just regular blue collar Americans who want to improve their health. We yeah. also work with a couple of celebrities. And yesterday, you no. Know, yeah, yesterday, uh, one of our one of our, our, our clients, one of the people we work with, his name is Reggie Watts. He was the lead musician on the Late Late Show. Oh yeah, and, yeah. And uh, so we've been working with him. He was actually on Joe Rogan yesterday and mentioned us. Oh, oh so shut up. super cool! Like it's just been absolutely. I listen, I listen to Joe Rogan all the time. I same here, and it's like. It's I listen to him every day. And so it's so cool to like listen to an wow. episode where they mention BioCoach. Logan, that's amazing. Have yeah. you not been on Rogan yet? I have not been on Rogan, but I I I I think one day we can be on because I think we agree on everything. I think I think uh, our totally our, our beliefs on health and how to get America healthy. And definitely freedom. align. And freedom, right. obviously. I'm from and Texas. Freedom. I mean, come on. That's why right. he moved to my no, home right. state. So right, right. Uh, I, I think we, I think we align. So I, I think, yeah, I think one day we could be on uh Rogan. So yeah. I totally think so. Did you hear Hulk Hogan on Rogan? I did. Absolutely Wasn't love it. Great? And I love when, when, uh, when he brings on, um, his friend who is a huge wrestling fan. Um, 
Oh, uh, uh, yeah. I, I totally forgot his name. I'm, it, yeah, it's Kill Tony. He has a, his show's name Kill Tony. Sorry, I don't know his name. But yeah. anyways, uh, yes. yeah, love it. Love it. Some of those are too WrestleMania for me. Some of those episodes are too MMA mm-hmm. or too something. I love it I, all. I love it I all. I skip over that. Yeah, well, you're a dude. I love a, it all. A weightlifting dude from Texas. Give me so, all of that. <laughs> that's right. But when Rogan has on, uh, he had RFK on in it. Absolutely. Love. My husband and I didn't say a word in the car. We no. were mesmerized. I and again, did not freedom know. Freedom seeking. I did not know who he was. I oh, did not know yeah. what he was about. And I will say this for the first 10 minutes, I was like, oh, I don't know if I can make it through he, because he's. Because of the voice. For the voice. But what yeah. he was saying, and I could get feel the it. passion. I was like, I don't care. I'm going to listen to this whole thing because I'm all for it. And so. Me too. Yes, I am. I'm a huge fan. Huge fan. Yeah. Yeah. Huge so, fan. yeah. And Rogan does, you know, three hour interviews yes. or two and a half or whatever. But, and Hulk Hogan. So my husband and I just listening, we were just traveling back from the West and we listened to podcasts and, uh, but I've heard Dr. Saladino and Sean Baker, you know, all the leaders, yep. thought leaders in, because Rogan will do um, carnivore See, I have vitiligo. He did it to repigment his vitiligo. And mm-hmm. that is what got me interested a year and a half ago. And I have had some new, you see, it, they look my like mom ha- my mom ha- My mom has that. My mom has of that. Of course exact- she does. Yes. My mom she has, has Hashimoto's. Yes. And so we were at Disneyland this past mm-hmm. weekend. And yeah, she had to wear long sleeves like everywhere yep. we go and have an umbrella because. Because it- for the first time I sunburn now. Because yep. I have no melanin. Well, now I'm doing this new thing. This is not medical advice, so everybody calm down. But I'm doing 50,000 IUs of vitamin D five days a week. And then I'm doing six milligrams of copper. There is a study that said that that did repigment and reversed psoriasis in certain people. So I've, I've done all the things, but Rogan is the one who first introduced me and said, but typically, so, you know, everyone with vitiligo either has type one diabetes or Hashimoto's. Yeah. I, I did. I did. I, I, did I had no idea. I have no idea that they. It's a big connection. Yeah. Or that they're in, connected. In, yeah. In fact, there's an umbrella. I have several of the autoimmune conditions under there. Now I've reversed all of them through mm-hmm. diet and prayer and lifestyle, right? Mm-hmm. Intermittent fasting has mitigated everything. This is the only one that's still tapping on my shoulder. And I, as I've said on here, it's only cosmetic. It provides me no discomfort, but I do spend majority of my time on camera and I, I would, I would love someday for not to have to wear makeup on my face and on my neck. And I don't on my hands when I do TV stuff. I don't care. Yeah. My mom is, is very, um, then, she's, she's, she's very self-conscious. I, I know it, she won't come out of the house or anything if she doesn't have yeah, makeup and yeah, that's me. Yeah. So is she full blooded Hispanic? Yes. So yeah. she's very dark. So yes. mine is. Uh, my father, Russian Jew. So I have olive skin. Mm-hmm. My father's a Russian Jew. So, but people always think they'll go, Oh, your skin's so porcelain and fair. I'm like, Because I have vitiligo. Yep. <laughs> go, yep. I really have olive skin. You just can't see it. Yep. So vitiligo is just, it's just annoying. But my point is, Rogan was the first reason I even considered carnivore. And then I think I heard Saladino maybe interview him or he interviewed Saladino or Sean Baker or somebody. I did see that Saladino may have step back a little bit and having more carbs in his diet, which I don't care. I don't care what anyone does with their body. I think, but I think what, a lot what do you of people think about all that. No, I think a lot of people are doing that. Even I, I think a lot of people, whether it's that method, I think a lot of people are, how do I say this? Are the, the evolution of their journey yeah, is always that, changing. Right. Absolutely, and so as it should, you, you saw the same thing with, um, Thomas DeLauer, you know, yeah, there right. were some very, yeah red line hard stances that he's now like hey take a okay. step back i may yeah. I, I may have been wrong i i, I think I'm, he's the one who interviewed saladino that i just saw on youtube this week yeah yeah and saladino's kind of saying well yeah besides the honey i'm realizing that i need some more and so with mine i always say that i eat beef butter bacon and eggs i eat rice because it's um we get it right here from the arkansas river it's as local as we can get it's a mm-hmm. national company ralston family farms and i do get local fruit in season but yes. truthfully i don't even think about those things 
Yeah. Because meat is so satisfying. You know, Absolutely. once you have a steak, you're like, nah, I really don't want any more food. Yeah. You, you have to, you have to do what works for you and everybody's different. Yeah. Like they're the, again, you know, your goals and my goals are completely different, right? Like right. I, I'm, I want to, I may, I always joke around. I'm a want to be bodybuilder. And so right. my main focus is building muscle. I want to be right. the most fittest dad at my girl's soccer game. I want to be the most so fittest I, dad at my, I, I my think daughter's you win. gymnastics. You, don't worry. You'll well, get I, the gold medal. But you, but, but you have to keep, you have to keep doing it. You know, you have so to keep. Carbs are helping you then at this point. Yes. And, and this is what I say. Okay. Look, listen, I, when I was overweight and obese, had all the, had all the metabolic dysfunction, if I would have had carbs, it would have screwed me over. Right. Because I had right. no muscle insulin resistance. Right. And I was in, and you know, I was just starting my fitness journey. Now that I have built muscle, now my body can handle carbs. No problem. No problem. I, I, I can have, you know, rice and a banana, sweet potatoes, and maybe I get a little spike. But if it was, if I were to eat those same food items back then when I was, you yeah. know, with well, all the men, it, it would, yeah. it would have, it would have jumped up a hundred, maybe 150. That's a very important point. That's why now I'm really going to start requiring my health coaching clients to get some type of device, CGM, to see what their body's doing. Absolutely. And the one thing you have to understand, see, people don't understand the term insulin resistance. You're making insulin. It's just resistant from doing its job of pushing glucose to the cells. Yes. You can't live without glucose in your cells. We know that. So once you get to the point where you're metabolically flexible and you're insulin sensitive, my body, see, let, so I haven't eaten yet. When I go to eat today, um, I am making a soup that has rice as you can put it together. So mm -hmm. I'm going to eat it for sure. But the reason I'm not worried about it is my body knows what to do with it. Mm -hmm. I, will, well, I, I will say this. I will eat the protein and fat first. Yep. I do what the glucose goddess says and I do my meal stacking. Yeah, just eat, because yeah, I do eating in a certain best. Eating in a certain order. In a certain Absolutely. order. There's that, so many hacks that people can do. That's right. And that's why at the Mexican restaurant, don't eat the chips no. until you've had protein and fat because you feel bad, y'all. But I'm sorry, Lisa. You, Most Mexicans are not going to do that. <laughs> so, I, my, I know. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. They're just not. They're 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 and, at that Mexican restaurant because they love those chips and 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 then the the crappy butter they give you. Right? They're not giving you right. carry gold. I understand. They're giving you the I the, the the cracker. <laughs> yeah, this the horrible stuff. Yeah, horrible. Yeah. But you would feel better. Absolutely. I know because I've, I've walked the path again, I'm a hundred years old. I knew this thing. <laughs> and in understanding again, that's why I said insulin's kind of the smoking gun of our health. It does yes. not get the credit, but it really is the one that is responsible for the way you feel. So if you're tired after a meal, it's because you're probably insulin resistant. Look what I got. I found these real salt um, Redmond sea salt makes many yep, the traveling salts. Well, Love them. Traveling I, salt. I, so I, 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 yeah. I take it with me. I give Everywhere. it to people. And now if you eat that even before my meal, then I feel better. You yeah. know, I have the electrolytes. It's amazing well, what you can do with the a hack here or there. Yeah. And then the other thing is like, I'm sure you've heard this is pe my culture freaks out whenever I do that. They're like, Oh my God, I thought salt was bad for you. Salt. I thought I salt's going to give me high blood. The doctor said no, no. salt. I'm like, not well, this salt. not your salt. Yeah. The salt that you, you <laughs> right. eat. Absolutely. This, this salt. No, this is, this is magic. This is great. You it need is, this, but they don't understand magic. it because again, what do we say? We've been brainwashed. Salt is bad. Butter is bad. Red meat is bad. Fat is bad. Fat is bad. Right. But you know, you can good. have all the sweets and sugary boxes and anything in a pantry, ramen noodles, and macaroni, you I know. know, yeah, is all fine. So yeah, I, it's, I love it's it when crazy. people ask us, my husband looks like a bodybuilder. He's very, very fit, low percentage body fat. I mean, he just does, he could, he good for did him. at one, for, he would bench press for up to 400 pounds. I mean, nice. he's amazing. Like his upper body's amazing. And when we go out and people say, so what are y'all eating? And we'll say, steak, you know hamburgers they go i thought you were a health coach like i'm doing wrong and i go i am <laughs> yeah it's, it's they crazy. go how are you eating all that steak and putting salt in your hand before you eat i go because i'm a health coach yep i i I'll, I'll take that salt and i'll just pour it on my in my hand i know it probably sounds gross oh. but and i'll lick it i don't care or i'll just I, throw it on my tongue i do this this has a little top to it look i'm already out of this one yep I, this i mean people 
that aren't watching, but it's the Redmond sea, sea salt makes little bitty salt shakers you take with you. Yeah. Okay. We're out of time. I'm so proud of all the work you've done. Thank you for inspiring people. Thank you. You're using your candor, your honesty, and saying, I don't have it figured out, but let's nope. journey. Let's lock arms and do it together. Absolutely. Let's figure out what works for me and what works for you. And your daughters are going to be different than you. Your wife is different than you. You know, it, we're all, we have bio individuality. I understand that. So we're going to send people to biocoach. Is that dot com? Uh, dot IO. I, oh, dot IO. Okay. And then um, we're going to get a Lisa Fisher said discount. I'm putting all that in the show notes. Absolutely. Logan, go out there and Goody Beats. I mean, that my son knows who, why Why the name Goody Beats? It, tell me the genesis it's, of that. It, really, long story short, it was a, a name that I made up when I was very young and dumb. Um, and nothing bad about it. it. Just I thought I wanted to be a producer rapper. I know, crazy, stupid. Anyways, and I was like, and at <laughs> of the time, course, me, you were me, a teenager. And instead, exactly. Instead of like me and my friends saying, what's up? We'd always say, what's goody? Like, yo, what's goody for tonight? Yo, what's oh, goody? And cute. so that was the word we'd always say. And then I wanted to make beats. And so I was like, what's I the see. word we always say? I want I to make it. beats, goody beats. And it just stuck and I've never changed it. And now when I walk down the streets, if I'm sure if I saw your son, he'd be like, yo, goody. It's like, I, I it, it's almost when someone says Logan, I'm like, who's, who's that? that? I'm goody. <laughs> it's, I'm where so where used, did you grow up? Uh, Texas. So born, I was in born Texas. in okay. San Marcos. Uh, yeah. I mean, raised in San Marcos, born in Austin, Texas, but have lived here my whole life. I am okay. a Texas boy Good. through and through. Our three branches of governments are HEB, Bucky's, and Word. and, uh, and uh, Waterburger. So <laughs> <laughs> those are great. our three Texas branches yeah. of government. That's great. Um, well, you keep promoting freedom and fitness. Absolutely. And uh, we're not going to see you in a nursing home someday. No, because no. You're, you're pushing freedom and fitness. And thank you right. for your work. Great job today. Yes, thank you. Thanks for listening to the Lisa Fisher Said Podcast. Be sure to hit subscribe and download all the episodes and leave a review, won't you? The Lisa Fisher Said Podcast is produced by ClantonCreative.com.